You might be wondering why is he wearing a cap indoors? I'm wearing a cap indoors because my hair is an absolute mess and I can't be bothered to shower because I'm on nights tonight so I'm going to shower later. So that's why I'm wearing a cap. I did this thing recently on Instagram that a lot of people have been doing where they post this little thing and they say, ask me an anonymous question. And what it means is people can write a question into this thing and it gets sent to you as anonymous. So I don't know who's asked these questions. And I thought it would be really fun. So I'm gonna today on video reply to all of these anonymous questions and in an anonymous Q&A. Some of these might be weird, some of them might be brutal. Let's check it out. Question number one, your wife is so beautiful. Yeah, thank you very much. I completely agree with you. And that's why I married her. How big of a nerd are you from one to 10? I don't know. I think I try to be cooler than I actually am. Like I think this cap is quite cool, but it's not really me. I think I am a nerd at heart. I think if you looked at my YouTube recommendations, you'd really be surprised with the kind of stuff that's turning up. I'm not a bigger nerd as one of my friends who's called Kieran, who I did the Australia series with, because we lived together at university for years. And I remember walking into his room once and just finding him watching chess videos online, not even playing chess, just watching two guys online play chess. So I'm not quite at that level yet, but I'd probably give me a, like a seven or eight out of 10. Someone has literally just sent an aubergine emoji. I don't know what I'm uh, inferring from that. I'm uh, also married, but thanks for the aubergine. Can't include that one in the Q&A if I wanna get this monetized. How are doctors from outside the UK working in the NHS seen by patients or colleagues? So. I would say that doctors working in the NHS that come from abroad are pretty much seen as everyone else because there's already like a hierarchical system of seniority of doctor. If you come from elsewhere and you fit into that higher category of doctor, it's actually fine. You're as well respected as someone else who's also coming in in that role. There is sometimes though a problem with a language barrier if they don't speak English very well. And that's more a problem with patients. And there is still racism in the NHS. I still get it because I've got brown skin and I imagine it's worse for people who struggle with the language. So that's the only thing to be slightly aware of. And I think the issue is that you can't really do anything about it because you are a public servant. Huge fan of you, your videos are crazy, you look great. When are you expecting your first baby? Is, is that you, mum? I have been asked this question so many times. I also get people saying, oh, I didn't know you didn't have a baby already because they keep seeing me post little videos of my niece. That is my niece, so that's my brother and my sister-in-law's child. I just post about her a lot because she's very cute. But I think we're not gonna have a baby for a little while. We've still got some time, some other things we need to do. Sam's currently in a, a job that she's enjoying. I need to finish my training. We then want to work on some other bits, go away a bit more. The kind of things you can't necessarily do when you have a very, very new baby. So we might wait a little bit until we do. So not for a few years, but I appreciate you asking. I would actually love to, and I think I want to make it like a really well-told story as well about how we met Leeds University, about our first dates, about how I proposed and our life so far. So great video idea, and I'm definitely going to do that. Unforgettable memory. There are so many memories that stick in my head, I think. The one I immediately think of is the memory where I proposed. So I proposed on top of the Shard. So the Shard is one of these really tall buildings in London. And we had a view all the way from Tower Bridge to St Paul's Cathedral. And it was floor to ceiling glass. I put all of these petals on the floor, loads of pictures of me and Sam. And then I got her up to the room and I proposed to her there. And it was just generally the best weekend. And when I think of like a really happy weekend, that's the weekend that automatically comes to my mind. And then the next day I arranged a surprise lunch for us and our families because like family is a huge important thing for both of us. And so to be able to share that with our families as well was also really special. So that's definitely an unforgettable memory. Are you planning for kids now or holding it for later on? We've already answered this, holding it for later on. Jeez guys. Do you regret anything about your career so far? I think if I was going back, I think I would have maybe gone part-time earlier. And I think that would have potentially given me a bit more time to do the media stuff that would also have made work less stressful and given me more time to spend with my family and friends. I think it's only becoming more of a thing that you can easily do without a proper reason now. As well as that, I maybe would have taken the opportunity more to explore different specialties just to get more experience in a ton of different things 
earlier on because I think it gets harder and harder to do the more senior you get as a doctor. And then the final thing is that I would have loved to work as a doctor in Australia. We have a whole series coming up about becoming a doctor in Australia. The reason I didn't is because it didn't really fit in with my plans at the time. And also it just seemed like a real hassle. Like I didn't really know how to do it or what to do. And looking back and hearing other people's experiences of it, I kind of wish that we'd gone and done that. Realistically, after being rejected from medical school multiple times, how many more times should I realistically keep applying? I think it's up to you. I think taking a few years out now in the grand scheme of things doesn't really make a difference to life. You're still gonna become a doctor. You're still gonna get the same degree. You're still gonna work and become a consultant or GP or whatever you fancy doing. I think the most important thing now is just considering is medicine definitely what you want to do? If it is, apply, 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 apply until you get it. If you are thinking, oh, maybe I don't want to do it, maybe I want to do something else, then now is a great time to consider because it's a long old slog. It's a significant time in training, years invested into it. And if it's something you don't really want to do or not sure you want to do, then consider your other options. Maybe become a YouTuber. You should upload on YouTube more often. Bro, tell me about it. What do you think of the controversy that happened during your last chat with Faye Bait? So, for those of you, I keep slamming this on the table, I'm not going to do that anymore. For those of you that missed it, I made a video with Faye Bait where we talked about her worries about becoming a doctor, her, you know, she was thinking, you know, is medical school really for me? And I was kind of that reassuring voice to say it's not all bad. And in that video, we talked a bit about pay and she said, how much does a doctor earn? And she thought a new doctor was on £28,000 a year because that's what it says online. And I said to her, actually, when I first started working as a doctor, because of all the additional bits that get added to your basic pay, the actual pay for me was more like £40,000 a year. And you can see on the BMA pay scales how that is possible. There was a bit of a heated conversation slash debate that happened in the comments. And then that got onto the front page of Reddit, basically, where someone in quite rude and horrible language was saying all of this nasty stuff and using some pretty colorful language. And you can tell when someone is saying stuff they don't want people to know is them. And, the, and here's the thing, the person who posted it was a medical student or a doctor and they had posted it anonymously. And you know someone is saying something bad when they post it anonymously. The argument basically was that I was saying that the pay is decent for someone who is new and fresh and graduated out of medical school. I guess I didn't fully appreciate the other side of the argument where a lot of F1s aren't just finishing medical school and they do have a lot of other responsibilities. However, I still did say that doctors have taken a huge pay cut and doctors deserve way more, but I was kind of just making the point that, you know, other people also are paid less. And the group of people on Reddit, mostly doctors, jumped on that, ripped it to shreds, and there was a lot of hate online from it. I think it's a thing I have seen online on forums, specifically the doctor forums, where people love to jump on top of things and rip them apart and really personally attack people, which I thought was just like super uncalled for. I understand and appreciated and sort of changed my perspective on how I was thinking about things, but I just think like the way it came about from Reddit was just really uncalled. For. Um, I'm not really going to include any of the thread here because I don't want to give them the airtime. And it really wasn't that nice. And I've spoken to a few people about it as well. And it made me appreciate more the hate you get online and how that can actually impact people. And we've seen that impact people in the past. See, I'm quite a resilient person and I don't take things too seriously. But if I were, I could really understand how that would significantly impact someone and be quite scary for someone receiving that hate online. I think the other thing to add to this is that certain people, especially medics, don't like to see other people doing different things or doing well in other things that are not medicine. How difficult is it for doctors outside the UK to come and work inside the country? So it's not something I've ever done, so I don't specifically know. I know that you've got to sit two exams and an English language test, but there seems to be a lot of people doing it, so I imagine it's like a reasonable pathway and quite a well-trodden pathway for someone to be able to do. Do you ever see yourself as working as a GP in Australia? Why are you tempting me? See, I would actually love to. The only reason that I wouldn't and the problem is that I've just got roots here now. I've got so much family here. I've got so many friends here. To uproot all of that, move to Australia and do everything there again, I'm just not sure I would be able to do it. I'm not sure it's worth the time investment. So probably not, but I would love the idea of doing that. You're cool. Is that because I've got this cap on maybe? I love your style. You should definitely create a lookbook that's actually a good idea. I feel like my looks are very simple though. They're very plain. I like 
plainish clothes. I've got a couple of like expensive designer items that are mainly trainers. So I've got like Yeezys and I've got some Gucci trainers and stuff like that. But otherwise I just try and wear sort of simple sort of clothes. A simple t-shirt with like a cool looking jacket is the vibe that I go for, but appreciate it. I just failed an anatomy exam and I'm feeling really down about it. No matter how much I revise, I can't seem to do well and it's making me reconsider whether I'm meant to be a doctor do you have any advice? I think when you fail an exam or fail anything in general, rather than going just straight back into it, back on the grind of revising, the most important thing is to sit down and consider why you failed. If you're not reflecting on and understanding your approach to it and the problems with your approach to it, you're just gonna fail again. Like that, you're gonna end up doing the same thing again. So my advice would be to consider what you're doing and compare that to other people that are doing well and then consider how you can then change your approach to it. Sometimes it's just not your day but other times it's because you are doing something wrong in the preparation. I'm a big fan of all this Anki stuff and this space repetition. It's very easy to do and it does really help you consolidate knowledge and information. So my advice would be keep trying, keep your head up. And these little hurdles in the grand scheme of things, failing one exam now is not going to affect your future if it's really what you want to do. Bro, that was, that was great advice. Have you ever watched a game at Old Trafford? So Old Trafford is the football stadium for Manchester United, one of the most famous football teams in the world. And the Man United football stadium is literally on my road. I can almost see it from my roof, which is there's like a garden on the roof of my apartment. And so we have been to loads of games and it's really difficult to get tickets. So when you do get tickets, they're like gold dust and I love it. Um, I'm a huge football fan, especially United fan. Well, the coolest thing about living so close to the stadium is that you can just walk there. So you're not stuck in all of this football traffic. You're not trying to get this crazy metro or anything like that. You can just sort of turn up to the stadium. On a scale of one to Indian, how Jamaican are you? Yeah, man. I have major imposter syndrome at med school. Does it ever get better? It definitely gets better. I think when it gets better is when you're actually doing things, when you are responsible for doing something like prescribing something or reviewing someone, you feel useful there. Until that point, you are still a spare part. So get used to it enjoy being a spare part. Enjoy the fact that you can just slip off and do this other thing because no one really knows where you are or what you're doing. Do you know any cute single doctors? Um, you know what, off the top of my head, I can think of a couple. Um, you've not specified what sex you're looking for, if you're looking for female or male doctors, but yeah, if you send me a DM, maybe I can hook you up with someone. How can I know that GP is best for me? I think it depends what you want to do, what are you interested in? Are you interested in the community or not? Some people do GP and just hate it. They're like, it's just not for them at all, which I completely understand, it, it, it isn't for everyone. So the best thing to do is literally just to get experience in doing it. So just go and get work experience in a GP surgery, see if that's the kind of thing you like or not like, and then you're gonna be able to make a decision about it. We need an OnlyFans ASAP. Well, on that note, I think we're gonna end the Q&A while I go and make an OnlyFans. I hope you enjoyed this video. A bit of a rambly talking video with some of anonymous questions. I thought they were gonna get juicier. They didn't get that juicy. I did have to censor quite a few of them that I just couldn't tell you on this camera. And maybe if you DM me, I will tell you what they were. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, take care, and I'll see you in the next one.